Well, welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This session, what we're going to do is work with Python lists and Python tuples. And they're a special type of container for more than one value. So what you need to do is go to the Blackboard website and go to NRM 638 and then go to that Python scripts links. And then under Python scripts, there's a folder, week one Python basics. So if we go inside that folder, download this text file, Python lists tuples.txt. So right mouse click save link as or save target as and save that to your computer and that will be a text file that you'll copy and paste into the python idle window so save that and that will result in a text file and here's the text file we're going to work with and we're going to basically copy and paste each line into our python interpreter window so the next step is we need to start python so Programs, ArcGIS, Python 2.7, IDLE. So we have our Python shell, and we have our text file. So what we're going to do is create a list. So we'll copy that first line and paste it into our Python shell, and then hit return to execute that. OK, so what that does is it creates a list. And that list will have two items in that list. And we might say, well, what's the type? Are they floating point, integer, string, etc.? So we'll copy and paste the next line. So the type is a list type. And the reason is, is a list can have a variety of different types within that list. So for example, in the next line, we'll create a list. And it will have numeric values and character values. OK, so this list has uh, numeric values and it has character values. So if we press Alt-P to recall our commands, the type is a list, but we could ask for each element in the list, what is its type? So for example, what is the type of the first element in that list and it's an integer and what is the type of the next element in the list so copy and paste and it's a string so this is element 0 in the list or item 0 in the list and then item 1 in the list okay we can change any item in our list so for example we'll change our point string to a multi-point string. So item 0 is this and item 1 is this. So then what's in my list? So now we've got item 1 contains that string. Okay, we can also uh, slice lists so basically, we could specify starting, stopping, and increment. So show us everything in the list starting at position 1. So position 1 will be this item. And show us everything in the list starting at position 1 but increment by two. So show us every other item in the list. So it shows us every other item in the list where the list contains six items. And then we could say, show us everything in the list except the last item. So this is basically up to but not including the last item in our list. And then if we want to, we could delete items in our list. So for example, delete the last item in our list, which is indexed with a negative one. So 
So then if we look at my list, we did delete that last item in the list. Okay, so to add items in the list, you can use the dot append request or method. So we're going to add to the end of the list this string called raster. And then if I press Alt-P, I can recall my command. So let's see what's in the list now. So now we've got the last item in the list is raster. And then we could say, well, let's search for our list. Search for the string raster and remove that from our list. And then once again, Alt-P to recall my commands so that it's no longer in my list. Okay, so we're going to use lists quite a bit in ArcGIS. You'll have like list of feature classes, list of fields, list of tables, etc. So here's an example. We'll use the range function to create a list. And we'll name this list uh, list of years, and it's going to range from 2000 up to but not including 2016. So what's in that list now? So now we've got all the years from 2000 up to in, including 2015 in our list. We can use the length function to say what's the length of the list, how many items are on that list. So there's 16 numeric values in the list. And then we can use the min or max function to get the maximum value in the list so in this case, the maximum value is 2015, and the minimum value is 2000. Okay, you can use the in operator to basically check, is this an item in a list? So copy and paste this if block. So control C, and then control V. So the way this works is it basically, if this is true, if 2015 is in our list, the Python interpreter will execute this print statement. And if it's not true, the Python interpreter will execute this print statement. So then press enter and it executes that if block. So basically if 2015 is in our list, execute this print statement and 2015 is in our list so it executes that print statement so then copy and paste the next if block which is going to be checking for is the numeric value 2017 in our list so we'll copy that and then control V to paste it and then just press enter to execute that if block so in this case it checked is 2017 in our list and it was not so it prints that value is not in our list okay the other thing we could say is okay for that list what is the position for some value so where is 2015 in our list and it's item number 15 on our list so if we look at our list years, so here's our list, and this would be item 0, item 1, item 2, all the way to the last item, and the last item is item 15. We could also check how many times does a certain specific value occur in our list. So that would be the dot count method. So basically, how many times is the value of 2,000 in our list? It occurs in our list one time. Okay, so a lot of times in ArcGIS Python scripting, we're going to loop through a list. And typically what we'll do is our, our loop will be for some variable in our list. So here's our variable. We call it year. So that changes the first time through the loop, it's going to be 2000. The next time through the loop, it'll be 2001. And it just keeps looping through the last time through the loop, it'll be 2015. So basically, we've got a for loop in this example. So for our variable year in our list, print processing 
and then we'll convert that numeric value to a string and then we'll add a backslash n which is a new line character so then just enter and enter so basically it executes that loop so the first time through year is 2000 the next time through year is 2001 etc and all it's doing is extracting from our list in a loop each value in our list so there's the list of values that we have in that list. Okay, you can also have lists inside of lists. So here's a simple example. We'll make a list of point values. So basically we've got a big list and inside that big list are four smaller lists. So they might represent the x and y coordinate of four points. So our first point has x, y coordinate values at 0, 0. Our last point has x, y coordinate values at 0, 10. And we could say, okay, well, what is the x, y coordinate at our first point? So that would be at index 0. So it has values of 0 and 0 at that first position. And then what's the next point's x, y values? So that would be at position 1, and that has x, y values of 0 and 10. So we could say, okay, f we'll make a loop for every list in our bigger list, print out our list of x, y coordinates and then just press enter to execute that loop. So basically it prints out the four smaller lists that are inside this larger list. And then we could loop again. So control V to paste. So for this object in our larger list, extract out the first item of that object and extract out the second item of that object. So print x is equal to the first item and then backslash t would be a tab and then y is equal to the next item in that smaller list. So then we have something like that where our original list contains so there's our original list, which has four lists inside it. Okay, so those are lists. There's also tuples, and tuples are very similar to lists, but they're immutable, which means they cannot be changed. So we'll make an example tuple. So what's inside this tuple? So tuples are delineated with parens. So what's inside this tuple? So it has these values inside the tuple, just like a list might have those values. And we could say, okay, for every item in that tuple, print out its item. So there we have these items in our tuple. We could say, what's the maximum value of our tuple? And what's the last item? So the last item in our tuple What's the length of our tuple? So we've got five items in our tuple. So one, two, three, four, five. And where is 2011 in this tuple? So it's at position zero. So here's zero, one, two, three, four. And how many times does 2014 occur in this tuple? So it occurs once in the tuple. So here it is. Okay, so tuples are analogous to lists, except you cannot change them. So for example, we cannot append 2016 to the end of our tuple. So we get an error message basically saying there is no such uh, function or method called append with tuples. 
and we cannot assign 2010 as our first element in our tuple or our first item in our tuple. We'll get an error. It does not support that. So that's really the difference between tuples and lists. Lists, you can change the contents and tuples, you cannot change the contents. Okay, so go to the Blackboard website and I've got a quiz question for you there. And when you successfully answer that quiz question, it will lead you to a link to the next video session.